Good morning, Prof. I don't know. I don't Good morning, Sajid. Morning. <clears throat> How are you? Good morning. Morning. Fine, fine, thank you. Anna, how are you doing? I can't I can't hear you. I don't know why. Hear me? Yes, I do. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jan. Good to see you. Okay. I think we have some more minutes to go. So if you don't mind, I will uh, try to see if everything is is okay in place and so on. Good morning, Anna. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you there. Sergey. Yes. How is the weather? in your country good weather cold no 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 you can see i'm sitting in short sleeve so that's <laughs> okay. that's good that's good here in spain we are having very good weather right now so i cannot see your face who is this i think is uh is this john john, john. hi john yes it's john. i thought it was you but you are wearing your hat and then I I didn't know if it was you or not. <laughs> it's nice to see you. <laughs> okay, let me let me go and see if everything is okay, and uh, I will come back. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Okay.
Hello, Antonio. Antonio. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Antonio. We are slowly, slowly coming. But section chairs, so far, we only have uh, Levgen, John Funso, Jan Hasse uh, for Ingo and Sergey, and then the three of us, uh, okay. Anna, uh, you and me. Still 10 minutes to Hopefully go. the number will be increasing. Um, so, by the way, did you, did you people have time to read the reports of the sections? They are sitting there in the drive. Antonio, well, you're losing weight, anyway. Antonio. You're losing weight. Is no, I don't think so. Unfortunately, not. Of your, of your daughter? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I don't think so, unfortunately. I think you are. Okay. It's camera effect. Okay. <laughs> okay. We lost Anna. I think we lost Anna somehow. Oh, so light is here. I'm here. Okay. I was unable to see you. Sorry for that. First one. Way back oh, in yeah, I know. Way back. I know. You should be the first one. You are the boss. Not always, uh, but in the least. You are the boss of this meeting. No, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Uh, so we have uh, Solide also who join us now. Yeah. 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 Very good evening. Welcome. I cannot hear you now, Solide. Is your audio working? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, okay. Maria Alessandra, yes. Hello to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we are just waiting for some more minutes. Maria. Everybody, better here just from Estonia, just checking the communication. Seems to work. Good to see you. Hi, Peter. How are you? Yeah, I'm still at home, but working. Yeah, we are. Well, we are in the same situation here in, in Spain. We are working from home, mainly the people from the universities. Uh, other people started working at their places. And we are, we have waiting to see what are the consequences if we started to go out or not hopefully not okay we, we have a slightly uh, lighter situation because uh, no big classes are, are low but smaller gatherings smaller apps are possible mm -hmm. that's good that is good okay let's see how many people we have now 12, okay, including the upcom people, right? I don't know if everybody in upcom will be able to join. And I know that some people are going to join later on. They said that they were unable to join us um, for the whole duration of the experience that many people who try this for the first time will be like 10 minutes late because they yeah. have to download the, the program and so on. Yeah, I know. I know. The first uh, 20 minutes are never easy. So this is why I gave us some like 20 minutes for the for the beginning, for the introduction and welcome and so on, because you know that some of them will have problems. Anyway, uh, who is typing really? It's Maria Alexandra, right? Sorry. <laughs> no, this is the problem with having uh, all the audios, um, all the microphones active at the same time because we but can. I'm hear... typing for this meeting. I'm typing for this meeting. I'm just saying That's hello okay. to, to That's someone. Okay, but we can hear you very clearly. Sorry, I'm sorry. Glad. I'll switch. To, sorry, I'll switch it off. Sorry. It anyway. Sorry, I'll switch it Try off. Sorry, to my talk apologies. More, then we my can apologies. Actually, listen and, and translate. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. I was just saying hi to, to John because he said, yeah. okay, sorry, my apologies. I'll switch it off. No, no problem. Right now we are not debating um, a, an important thing. Just uh, we were saying hello to each other and having the pleasure of seeing our faces that we were unable to do that in March because the meeting was too large. And now we can do that. So at least we have that. I'm enjoying the inside of your houses also. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing uh, the beautiful pictures of Sergei in the wall, and then the my summer house. of Peter, nothing in the case of Jan, and uh, not too much in the case of Anna. And I guess that uh, I put the drapes because I uh, give my lectures on this and they don't need to see well uh, our guest bed, which is just behind me. I totally understand, Jan. I was trying to place my camera also in such a way that um, people will not be distracted with the background of the room where I am. So I totally understand. And Antonio is very prudent and you only you can all only see the <laughs> how you say the oh thank you now we can see your your picture there okay so four more minutes for the official time but i guess we will wait uh, if you don't mind five extra minutes so that at least uh we have the courtesy of waiting for five more minutes. In Spain, we used to say the 10 minutes, the courtesy of 10 minutes late. But I know that that's not shared by Central European uh, people. They want to be always on time. Germany is on time, always. Uh, well, OK, it's a joke. Nearly always. <laughs> nearly always. When Margareta was the chair, she was always trying to start things on time, but she was never successful. Because one of the beautiful things of our region is that the diversity is tremendous. So only few countries are as punctual as the northern countries and the central of countries of Europe. So uh, while other people join, can we try the feature of raising your hand? Can you raise your hand, uh, any of you, to see if we, if I detect that? Um, I don't see any any hand raises that mine. I have raised my hand. Should be visible too. I can change my hand because uh, right left hand was shaded by books. So, well, I was meaning the virtual hand, but uh, we can also do that. Uh, but it, I will not always see the physical hand in the screen. So, so apparently it's not working. I cannot see any. Antonio, can you raise your hand to see if I if I see it? I'm looking also for the button. Could not see it. It's raised, Magdalena. And why could not see it? I don't know. I see. I'm it. also in the same situation. I cannot uh, raise the hand. It's a virtual hand. I can raise only physical. <laughs> uh, good morning. This is Tohib. I can raise my hand. Uh, I've just done it. Uh, you have uh, high, so high. Well, for some reason I cannot see it, and I was uh, hoping that I will be able to see uh, the hand raise in order to give you the floor. Uh, George, can you help me with this? 
I think I found the view. Magdalena, I have raised my hand. And I could do it in chat area. Uh, yep, but I somehow I cannot see it. Magdalena, I have yes. already your hands. Yes, now I put it off, but I'm interested in myself. I, I am interested in seeing the hand of the other people, and I cannot see it in my screen. I don't know why. We have now two hands, three. So, hi, Peter and Antonio, and Hian now. Okay. We have now so probably there is something that I didn't set up here in my... Me, me also. Okay, so... Um, I can George, put on this video if you want. George, can you, can you hear me? George Michael, can you hear me? George Michael, are you there? Antonio, for that matter, I, I need help here to uh, give the floor to people when the... Uh, yeah, I was talking to George. Uh, hand. To so if I don't see the hand, which I'm not seeing any hand, uh, please help me there and uh, give the floor to. Thank you, Antonio. Sure. I don't know what uh, I would have done without you. Good morning, Antonio. Okay, so now um, we are waiting for other people to join. I'm expecting a total of 25 people, more or less. <laughs> And uh, the moment uh, you are ready, I will start. Hello. I'm here. It's getting interesting. So good morning, everybody who is there. We are about to start, but we are going to give two more minutes to people to join. And then uh, at 10.35 sharp, sharp, I will start, okay? And meanwhile, just um, welcome all of you.
Okay, so um, we have been waiting for five more minutes in order to allow people to come in. So I will start the meeting right now. And the first thing I would like to say is that um, after we introduce ourselves, or maybe now and then after we introduce ourselves, you, you also mute your microphone. So right now I am hearing a lot of back background noise. So I will be most grateful if everybody mutes uh, their um, microphones. And later on, I will let you know when you are allowed to unmute. So let's see if we can reduce the background noise. Thank you very much. Now, now it's perfect. So um, this is a special meeting and uh, I think uh, that we would like to have more meetings like this, informal meetings, just to talk to each other, the members of the committee. And uh, this meeting is essentially is the voting members of uh, Region 8, uh, OPCOM members and uh, section chairs. And uh, I think it's, it's a good way of exchanging uh, ideas so we will repeat this type of, uh, of meeting um, as needed or as suggested. And uh, in the years to come, the directors that will come, uh, they, will, they will see if they would like to repeat this type of meetings. Anyway, uh, this meeting has a very, a very special um, rationale behind. Can you move to the next slide, please? So um, it's essentially driven by the difficult times that we are uh, living, going through. Um, yes, we are all in agreement that it has not been easy during these uh, past three months, but we also have the opportunity to learn new ways of conducting IT business and to spend more time meeting with each other. So today we will conduct this uh, virtual meeting with the Region 8 Section Chairs and OPCOM, as I said. Uh, as I also mentioned in my emails, it's going to be an informal meeting, more of a brainstorming brainstorming session. And I would like to thank, as usual, the Secretary, Ana Madureira, and our electronic communication coordinators, George and Maria, for setting up the infrastructure. Um, we asked we asked you before to send uh, reports about the activities uh, you were having during these past three months. Uh, we have a number of sections that uh, send the reports uh, in, and you have the link to the drive where we have posted uh, those um, those reports. Probably you didn't have time to to go through them because some of them came very late. Actually, some of them came this morning. So um, I, I'm not expecting that you will have had the time before to read them, but I will suggest that you go through them and we can learn from each other and you will find there some interesting information. Can you move to the next slide? Um, so this is the logistic of this meeting. Um, we were hoping to see each other so this is why we are asking you to activate both your video and your audio um, however whenever you are not speaking i think it will be a good idea and i will do the same to mute uh, our microphone so that we will reduce the background noise if you would like to speak just raise your hand and antonio not me, because somehow my, that feature in my, uh, I don't have it available. So, but Antonio has it. So Antonio will give, will recognize you and then you unmute your microphone and you say whatever. Uh, this, that, that's the link where the section chair reports are placed. And uh, we have been doing that, as I said, in, um, 
a real time manner and some of of you well in particular nigeria john funso has sent uh, an update the update is there a link to the photograph that i have included in uh, in the slide and uh, that he sent and uh, can you move to the next slide and this is the last one don't worry um this is not going to be a a meeting with presentations essentially you know, only two of them yeah, I will, I will move to the next slide, but before that, uh, maybe we should remind people that we will be streaming this meeting so that they yes. are aware. Yes, yes. Will be. We are going to be streaming this meeting and also we will send to the people who said that they were unable to be with us today, the section chairs that were unable to make it. We will send the, the link uh, so that everybody will have access to everything. Okay, so and now we are going to go through the agenda. Um, I'm not going to ask for uh, the approval of the agenda. As I said, this is an informal meeting, so no, there is no need to make motions and so on. Uh, and you have this agenda already. So uh, essentially, it's going to be just um, intro introducing, introducing ourselves. Sorry, uh, I already. Uh, in form of uh, what uh, we are going to do. Antonio is going to give you a, a, a more detailed rationale for this meeting. Actually, my, my rationale has been uh, really like non-existent, which is based in a meeting of the Strategic Planning Committee of the Region 8, and also in the last OPCOM meeting that we have only a few days back. And then, we open the, the rest of the meeting to for informal discussion with uh, everybody uh, at 12 30 because we want to finish by by one more or less antonio will uh, wrap up and then we will finish our meeting and hopefully we will uh, meet again uh, in the in the same format uh, sometime uh, in future so uh without Nothing else. I'm going to go to the uh, introduction. I'm going to follow uh, the list of uh, of the people who um, that I have in the doodle that you were going to attend this meeting. Um, just because sometimes uh, the the names of the participants are not complete here, and if I miss somebody, um, please just at the end let us know that I miss you. Okay. So I will go with no particular order. Uh, so the first person that I have here is David. Are you, are you there? Can you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm doing well and happy. Um, we just um, got into our winter season, had Learning in Mediterranean weather, so we just had um, three days of continuous rainfall. So that's why I'm wearing um, something slightly warmer than most of you who are hitting summer now. Um, we've had a number of activities, um, should I go on with activities with just uh, David, casual greetings? David, this is just introduction. Uh, later on, we will talk about the activities if you wish. Because otherwise we will make this uh, this introduction um, very long. So yes, what I will ask from all of you, although we know each other, but uh, since we didn't have a face-to-face -face meeting in March, what I was hoping from you is yes to state your name, uh, your position, which means which section are you re representing, and if you want to add uh, something related to your uh, job um that's fine so david is uh, the chair of south africa section you want to add something to that in addition to that thanks um chair i i'm a senior lecturer at the university of cape town uh, bureau of specialization is power systems and that's about it for now thank you very much thank you Love again uh are you there yes Hello to everybody. Hello. My name is Evgen Pichkalov. Uh, I am vice chair of ITP Ukraine section. And also? 
uh, also I am a membership development subcommittee chair. Okay. Thank you, Levigan. Nasser or Nasser, I don't know how you pronounce uh, Nasser Assem, are you there? Yes, I am here. I'm here. Thank you, Magdalena. Yeah, Nasser. 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 Welcome, Nasser. <laughs> okay, so I am Nasser Assem. And uh, so I have been elected the chair of the uh, Morocco section in this under these circumstances. So I must be one of the few who have been there. So the transition hasn't been that easy, but there are opportunities though. And I am a faculty member at uh, Al Ahawain University in Ifran, one of the few uh, uh, American system based universities in Morocco. Thank you very much. I teach computer science, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, so Levente is there. He was not sure if he was going to be able to attend, but uh, I don't know if Levente joined us or not. Nadezha, uh, I, I saw you, so you are there. Will you please introduce yourself? So I'm Nadezhda Kunitsina, Chair of Latvia section. Thank you very much for such opportunity. Thank you, uh, Nadezhka. And uh, next is Katarina. Good morning to you all. Uh, I'm Good morning, Katarina. Hello, Magdalena. Uh, I'm the chair for the Portugal section, um, and I'm very glad to see you all. Uh, I'm a professor at the University of Coimbra in Portugal, and uh, I teach computer science. Thank you very much, Katarina, for being here. Um, Pero is there uh, from from Macedonia. Um, did he join us? Well, he was not sure if he was going to be able to do it. So, or maybe he will join us later on. Pero, no, he's not. Filippo, are you there? Filippo, no. Uh, Ingo Han from Germany section is unable to join us today, but uh, Jan Hasse is here. Uh, representing the section. Jan, please go ahead. Hi there, greetings from Germany. I'm Jan, maybe most of you know me already. Uh, I'm current vice chair of Germany section and therefore uh, I step in for Ingo. Um, well, what I do at the moment is I'm on professional and educational activities subcommittee at Region 8. And um, in my real life, I teach at a university in Northern Germany near Hamburg. Thank you, Jan, and welcome. Uh, Kirill is, um, I think he was unable to join us. Kirill, are, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, you are from Bulgarian section. Uh -huh. Hello to everybody. In uh, real life, I am a member of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences and working in there. Thank you very much, Kirill, for being here. Ritha Hamila, are you there? Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Magdalena. For, uh, good morning, Ritha. Yes. Uh, uh, greetings to everybody. Uh, I am uh, Ritha Hamila, Qatar Section Chair. I am Professor at the Electrical Engineering Department of Qatar University. Yeah. Thank you. So, Conrad Attar from uh, Malta Section was unable to, to join us. I don't know if he made it at the end. Conrad, are you there? Okay. Andre, trust. Hello. Hi, Andre. Uh, chair of uh, Slovenia section and working at University of Ljubljana. Thank you, Andre, for from be for being here. Simon. Whoa, but was also um, not sure of being able to attend. Simon, are you there? Uh, yes. Uh, good oh, morning. Good. good. Good morning. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm available. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Simon Muwawo. I'm the, the chair for IEEE Zabia section. 
I'm from the industry, working as a chief executive officer for uh, Fibercom, a company that deals with the fiber network in, in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for being here. Ala Khalife? Ala, are you there? Okay, maybe he will join us later. Adele uh, from uh, Tunisia section, are you there? No. Sergey, you are there. I know that. You were there from the very beginning. Yes, I am Sergey Shapochnikov, and today I'm representing the uh, Russia Northwest section. And you know, I am also a member of the Originate Subcommittee for Nominations and Appointments. Well, and everybody is, like everybody said, in the real life, I'm a professor of St. Petersburg Electrotechnical University. It's a pleasure to see you all in good health. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Hadi Moradi, are you there? He was um, also having problems with us on Saturday. Hadi, are you there? Yeah. Good. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hadi Moradi, the section chair for Iran and I am a faculty member of the University of Tehran School of Electrical and Computer Engineering, mostly in and robotics. Thank you, Hadi, for being here. I'm Peter Ellervy. It's our next... Hello, time. everybody. Peter Ellervy, a student section chair uh, in real life, a professor at Tallinn uh, University of Technology. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, Ana Madureira is here, of course. Ana, just uh, introduce yourself to everybody, please. Ana Maria Madureira, I'm the Region 8 Secretary, and uh, on my real life, I'm a professor uh, at Computer Science Department from the uh, Polytechnic of Porto, in Portugal. Thank you, Ana. And uh, so, hi. everyone. Good morning. Soheb Sheikh, I'm the Vice Chair of Technical uh, In my professional life, um, I work in the industry in London. I, I work in the area of prop tech and operational technology uh, in the real estate sector. Welcome to today's meeting. Thank you, uh, Soheb. And the uh, next one is Vasily Borisov. Vasily Borisov is not here. Uh, I will be his behalf. My name is Anton Dolganov and I am vice chair of Russia Siberia section. I am also okay. I'm also associate professor in Euro Federal University, Yekaterinburg. Spheres of interest are biomedical engineering. Welcome An Anton and thank you for being here. Dmitry Petrov from Finland, are you there? Yes. Hi, everybody. And uh, Hi. nice to hear you. And yeah, sorry, I'm a bit less official atmosphere here. And, but hello from sunny Finland to everybody. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm a chair of the Finnish section. And also, it's my main job. I'm, I'm with Nokia Bell Labs and yeah, lately working with uh, wireless standards. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Boris Dum Dumnik, are you are there, no? Boris? Okay. He might join us later on. Maya Matijasevic? Hello, uh, I'm uh, section chair of the Croatia section and I'm also a professor at the University of Zagreb in Croatia. I tell you that. Uh, thank you, Maya, for being here. And in the case of Maya, their country really, uh, the, the circumstances were the worst uh, all over uh, Region 8 because of the added problem of the earthquake. So you really had a hard time. But we are happy that uh, everything went uh, fine. Thank you. And then Oscar from Spain. Oscar, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Good morning to everybody. Uh, this is Oscar Bonastre. I am the chair of the Spain section. 
and I am faculty member at Miguel Hernandez University in Alicante, where I teach advanced distribute systems. Um, thank you, Oscar, and welcome. Mark Bentum, um, I don't know if he is here because he said he was unable to join us. Uh, I don't, it doesn't look like Adam, our treasurer, very important person. Hi, everyone. I'm Adam Eskramski, I'm treasurer of Region 8. Um, in my professional life, I semi-retired from University of Kent at Canterbury in UK. I'm also visiting professor at the University in Isigelec in Rouen in France. And additionally, I'm also vice chair of a local council in Frauli, where I live. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. And well, Frantisek from Chile was unable to join us today. Maria Alessandra is here from Switzerland. Yes, I'm here. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, thank you first, Magdalena, for this opportunity to meet virtually. It is much appreciated. Reading from Switzerland, I'm Maria Alessandra Pon. I'm the chair of Switzerland section. Uh, by profession, I am currently working as a telecommunications engineer at the Federal Office of Communications of Switzerland in the access to market and conformity section of video equipment. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here and looking forward to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Alessandra, and welcome. Next, we have Claire as France section chair. Hello everyone, I'm Claire Lajomazin. I'm representing France section as an elected chair. And in my professional life, I'm a scientific advisor for my company, which is the French Electrical National uh, Transmission System Operator, RTE. And I'm uh, happy to meet you, even if it's not so convenient. And I'm looking for knowing you a little more in the real life. But that's good today. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, Claire. Contadinos from Cyprus was unable to be here. Instead, we have George, who is our electronic communication coordinator. George, would you like to show your face and introduce yourself to the to the rest of the attendees as representative of Cyprus? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. I was not sure. So, my name is George. I come from Cyprus. I'm a PhD student at the University of Cyprus. And currently, I'm uh, part of the Cyprus section uh, uh, committee as the treasurer and part of Region 8 as the electronic communications coordinator. Thank you, George. Uh for being here and for helping. Um, Esabo is here. Esabo. Doesn't look that uh, he probably will join us later on because he said that he was able to attend. Uh, Samart. Yes, I'm here. Uh, so my name is Samar. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the chair of uh, Sweden section, uh, and this is my third year. Uh, I'm also the chair of the Apex and IEEE committee. Uh, I work at ABB in, in Sweden. Thank you. Thank you, Samar, and welcome. Fatma from the United Arab Emirates. Fatma. Apparently, she's not here. Uh, Mohammad Al Muhaini. Yeah, good morning, everyone. This is Mohammad Al Muhaini, chair of director, uh, the chair of uh, Saudi Arabia East section. I teach electrical engineering and King Fahad University for 21 minutes. Thank you, Mohammad, for being here. John Funso from Nigeria. John. 
عليك ليش ما تعرفي نفسك ندو عليك الآن لينا جان قريب المكروفون جان فونسو he was here I don't know what happened with with him uh, okay so light go ahead and uh, finish your introduction oh So light, we cannot hear you. Your audio is not working. George, can you send uh, through chat uh, to Solight that we cannot hear him, please? Bachar El Hassan, is, is he here? So light, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, so light. So light is muted. Um, so light, will you please unmute yourself? Or George or Antonio, you have host, uh, privileges or Anna, can you unmute him? I think he's unmuted. I don't know, we cannot hear him. So I think uh, we have uh, some people missing. Ahmed Hassan, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm uh, Ahmed Hassan, I'm the Egyptian uh, section chair and uh, yeah. I am the Dean of Information Technology and Computer Science in Nile University. And then uh, the last I have in my list uh, is Antonio. I think uh, you know Antonio quite well, but Antonio, uh, yeah. will you please go ahead and then yeah. we'll see if we are missing somebody. I think we are missing a couple of people, but my name is Antonio Luque. I'm uh, director elect of uh, the region. I'm uh, talking to you uh, from Seville in southern Spain, where I used to teach to my students face to face, and now I'm teaching them uh, online. Okay, um, I think we have missed uh, some people. Will you um, like to? I I see here at least Johan Jan. Yeah. Uh, morning, everyone. This is Yohan Yang, uh, representing the Archibald Denmark section. I'm also working as an associate professor uh, in power electronics at Albrook University. Thank you so much. We also missed, uh, well, at least we, I was not able to hear him, John Funso. We gave him the, the, the floor, but he didn't use it. John, are you there? Somehow we lost him. And uh, I see also Hafid Al Samarai. I think we miss you also. Are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay. Will you? Yes, we can hear you very well. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's a change, quite a change from uh, usual meetings, uh, but it's nice, nice experience. Uh, I am Habib Al Samarai, the vice chair of Western Saudi Arabia section. I work in the consultancy in this dur during these difficult times, which makes it really difficult. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Hafid, for being there. I think we also uh, missed uh, Fati. Good luck. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, this is Fatih Ugurdak. I'm Turkey Section Chair. I'm a professor of electrical engineering at Erzurum University in Istanbul. Thank you, Fatih. And uh, don't worry, you're here in your in our list. <laughs> and uh, I think we miss also Adil. Adil, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, hello everybody. Adil Sultan, I'm the Vice Chair of Member Activities Region 8. 
and also the vice chair here in uh, UAE. And professionally, I'm working as a director of projects uh, in the Emirates Telecommunication Department. Thanks. Thank you, Adil. So with this, I think we have completed the introductions of the people attending the meeting. If if I miss somebody, could you please uh, say so now, either through chat or raising your hand? Yes. Can I um, introduce myself? Um, of course, Allah. Yeah, uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Allah. I am an associate professor at the German Jordanian University, and I am the IEEE Jordan section chair. Thank you. I, I think I gave you the the floor, uh, but you were not yet with us, and this is why we skipped you. No worries. Sorry, sorry for that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I think yeah. now... Magdalena? Um, yes? Can yes. you hear me? Uh, Bernardo, Italy section. Oh, yes. Thank you for being there. Yes, I, 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 yourself, Bernardo. I finally could attend and thanks for, for the invitation. Just uh, shortly, I present myself, Bernardo Tellini, uh, chair uh, of the Italy section. My position at the University of Pisa is a full professor of electrical measurements. And I'm calling now from, from Pisa my home thank Thanks. you bernardo uh so i think uh, if there is nobody else i will give some seconds just to see if uh, i still miss somebody hello can you hear me oh john you're back yes we we can hear you john go ahead go ahead My name is John, John from Shadabio. I'm the IEEE Nigeria Section Chair. I'm also the IEEE Johannes Maitreya Community Chair. And I'm also the IEEE HSC, the Equitas Partnership Chair. And um, two weeks ago, I've been appointed the program coordinator. Yes, And uh, I'm a research for I need to do it. All right, John, your uh, your voice is breaking all the time, but uh, I think we understood what you were saying. So welcome to the meeting, and uh, I hope that this time uh, we are all of us here. I didn't miss somebody, anybody. I hope so. And then I will give the floor to Antonio, who will uh, explain in detail what is the scope of the meeting and uh, we still have uh, like two hours uh, to conduct the, the meeting. Antonio, please. Okay, thank you, Magdalena. Good morning again to everyone. Yeah, I would like to uh, talk, introduce a little bit uh, the discussion that we are going to have later, because as Magdalena mentioned several times, it's not supposed to be a meeting of uh, many presentations and slides and so on, but uh, rather uh, a discussion among us uh, especially in these difficult times that we are living, right? So we thought on uh, organizing this meeting for all of us so that we can at least virtually see each other, uh, talk and uh, yeah, exchange ideas or, or things to do uh, during this, uh, this strange uh, lives that we are uh, having now, right? So we will be having a, a proposal uh, for the region to help uh, our members, to help our sections, uh, but this is just a proposal and we would like to uh, hear about you, uh, whether this will uh, suit the things that you have done, whether it will suit the, uh, the, the prospective future in your countries, or maybe we can adapt a little bit and improve so that we can have like a common response to the challenges that we are, that we are facing, right? So, uh, as you all know, uh, since March, we are living in more or less 
different types of lockdowns, uh, right, uh, all through the region and uh, many of our uh, liberties that we had before were taken out uh, in response to this uh, pandemic, right? And this had the consequence of uh, having no possibility of meeting other members, other volunteers in practically any place in the region. Uh, this is one of the things that we did best in IEEE, right? Meeting people, networking, exchanging ideas, and so on, and we were uh, suddenly uh, removed uh, of this possibility. Uh, so uh, everybody shifted to online events, what was wonderful, and uh, at the same time we showed how uh, technology can uh, improve the ways we communicate. Uh, it was uh, like a, a good solution given the circumstances, and everybody started to do uh, these uh, webinars and talks and virtual meetings like we are doing and so on. And uh, in my opinion, the, the, the response that we had uh, in this uh, aspect was very good, as we can see in the reports that you all sent uh, for this meeting, right? So I think given the, the situation, everybody did the best that they, they could and uh, the members were served uh, somehow in a, in a, let's say, more or less acceptable way uh, uh, during this time because there was no, no other way, right? This, at the end, this is the, the most important thing that we still serve our members and we show that IEEE has some value even in this. Uh, circumstances. Uh, but uh, even in that, uh, with that, uh, let's say, effort, uh, membership has been declining all over IEEE, uh, and we can see clearly that there is a, an effect of the situation on membership that can be seen uh, almost everywhere in the region, almost every section, uh, and this is something that needs uh, that we need to be uh, worried about, right? And uh, it will be difficult to overcome this, but uh, I will show some numbers in, in one minute. But now we are already in June. There are many countries that already started to, to lift to alleviate some of the uh, measures, uh, the confinement that they had. So they are slowly allowing some small gatherings of people uh, some shops are being open, restaurants, these places, still no mass gathering events, but some, uh, let's say, small uh, groups of people can do things together for the first time in a couple of months, right? And this is a, and this is a good thing. And this is the situation that we are, are living now in most of the countries in the region. We know there are many different uh, situations and the, the disease has affected different countries in different ways, but this could be the generic uh, situation and we would love to hear from everyone what, what is the situation in your country and how this situation affects the, uh, to the type of things that you can do uh, for IEEE members. Uh, in general, in the region, traveling is not allowed. There are a couple of exceptions, of course. They are starting to uh, allow some things. Maybe in a few weeks, uh, some more things will be uh, allowed um, by law. Uh, by uh, IEEE rules, we cannot travel under IEEE business yet. Uh, there is a, a worldwide ban on that. And so we cannot do any, any, let's say, we cannot go anywhere else to do IEEE business yet. Uh, th maybe they will lift this, uh, this ban uh, soon or not, but uh, at the current moment, we cannot uh, travel for IEEE business as volunteers or other staff, they cannot even travel. Uh, when talking about membership, I would like to quickly show you a couple of uh, slides. These are the year, uh, the month to month membership for different years. So in, in uh, this violet, uh, light violet, we can see uh, 2018 a year uh, and more month of a month. So we see that every month we have a, uh, let's see if I can, if I can point here. Yes. Uh, every month, every January of every year, we have a high number of members and these members are deactivated at the end of February. So we uh, lose members and then we start to recruit new members or to recover the old ones and we uh, grow month over month until December. So these are different years here in violet uh, and in red. And then in green, we can see 2020. So it's clear that we are not uh, following the path that we had in the previous year. And this is definitely due to the effect of the pandemic. So we started uh, losing a, a number of members in March, at the end of March. Then the, the gap was uh, uh, larger at the end of April, and it's even larger at the end of, uh, of May, right? This is the latest uh, numbers that we have. At the end of May, the difference year over year with respect to May 2019 was minus 5.9%. This is global, uh, all IEEE, and I will show you now that uh, in Region 8, we are in general more or less around this number. So we are more or less on average. There are 
uh, do, regions doing slightly better, slightly worse, and we are more or less on average. Uh, yeah, these are the, the numbers here. So here we can see uh, on the left side uh, all the 10 regions, and then uh, we see higher grade members, graduate student members, undergraduate students, and for each of these uh, member grades, we see the numbers in 2019 and 2020, right, and the change. And the change is uh, with a red background. When this change is negative, you see most of the chart is in red background. This is very uncommon, right? Only there is a small uh, or a significant increase in Region 10 higher grade members, and this is due to one specific section there, uh, which drives the membership. Other than that, they are also declining. So if we are here in Region 8, we see that we uh, we are 4% uh, less higher grade members than one year ago, 6.7% less graduate students than one year ago, 16.7% uh, less undergraduate students than one year ago, uh, globally minus 6.3%, close to the average. So we see that the other regions will, which already lost 13%, 9%, 8%, uh, but uh, the trend is quite, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, negative all over the world. Right. Of course, there is little that we can do to, uh, uh, um, let's say, to improve the situation all over the world, right? At least uh, in the short term. But uh, we need to live with this. Um, we need to mitigate, and we need to start, uh, let's say, reviewing our uh, uh, our way of doing things and uh, see if we can still serve the members, engage them, uh, uh, even with this situation that makes that people. Uh, are not able to attend conferences or attend workshops or uh, all these things that typically drive our membership and uh, is one of the things that they value the most of IEEE. So that's why we would like to uh, uh, propose something uh, that we uh, started thinking uh, and see how the region can support this uh, uh, different initiatives that could happen uh, uh, in different places, mainly in different sections, right? That's why we call distributed meetings because we cannot have a big region aid meeting or a conference where people from different countries attend and they stay they stay together and exchange information and so on. These things that we used to to do uh, one year ago we cannot do anymore. But as we mentioned, uh, it's possible or should be possible to uh, uh, do uh, small things in different parts of the region. Even if we cannot travel uh, from Italy to Poland, uh, it's possible to do some things in Poland and some things in Italy which is better than nothing. So we had a, a couple of meetings in the last weeks uh, trying to think how the region can support uh, the different sections and the different units. So we had a meeting of the uh, Strategic Planning Committee uh, and we came with some ideas. We had a meeting of the OPCOM of the region and did we discussed these ideas and then tried to uh, materialize them. So we will, be, we will be proposing these ideas and then uh, uh, we would like to hear your opinion and ways of improving them. Right. So this proposal is still proposal. The idea is to have distributed meetings. Not we cannot have big meetings, as we mentioned, of different people from different countries, but we, we can have local meetings, real face to face meetings in principle, uh, where small groups of people uh, will meet always following uh, uh, local regulations. And we can combine them with uh, a virtual online uh, uh, connection so that we can call them hybrid meetings. So we can have like remote speakers, remote guests, or we can have a small meeting of five people here and 10 people there, and they are connected somehow. We need to, to work on the details. But this is, should be possible uh, starting from now, and it looks like the summer will be more or less OK uh, regarding the pandemic, and we will have like a, at least a small uh, break. We don't know what will happen in, in fall, but in summer it seems that all over the region situation will be like this, right? Uh, able to uh, to do these small meetings. This, of course, is just a temporary program transient thing uh, that to, to keep the members engaged. We would love to uh, come back to uh, big meetings where people from different countries and regions can uh, meet together. But uh, for now, while this while the current situation lasts, uh, we can have this uh, this temporary solution, like which is uh, as we said, is better than than nothing, right? And we don't know for how long the situation will last, but uh, we will see and we will be adapting to it uh, as it evolves. So the idea is that uh, local OUs, like sections, chapters, student branches, uh, affinity groups, and so on, we organize these uh, small meetings, and there will be no need to travel, even within the section, 
right? I know uh, that some sections, some countries, actually, uh, some countries allow uh, internal traveling, even between neighboring countries is more or less allowed. But the idea here is that uh, we cannot travel under IEEE business, so the, uh, no, no traveling at all for this meeting. So this will be organized in one city and only the people who can uh, uh, go to that city, let's say by public transportation or private transportation, very small, uh, let's say commuting time, will go, uh, will attend physically uh, these meetings, right? That there will be no, no need to travel uh, even within the country. The idea is that the region will provide support. We would like to help you. We would like to help in rebooting these uh, uh, meetings and this IEEE uh, way of working. And this support will come in many different ways. We can help you finding speakers, local or remote speakers. We can provide uh, volunteers. We can help in publicity. We can help in the uh, with the logistics if needed. And we can also help financially, right? So uh, there will be money uh available for this and because even if there is no travel no hotel nights no planes and so on there will be cost of this because this is uh, again real life meetings and there will be cost for that we will talk about that later and uh, the region is ready to support you uh, financially when you organize these things and as i mentioned this is targeted to local units right we are not trying to do something region-wide there is no need to that we, everything can be available online these days, but the, the idea is to have this distributed spread through the, the region, even if they are local. We are learning to live uh, local these days, right? So this is uh, aimed to chapters. Chapters are very good in doing local things. Student branches are even better. And student branches, uh, students have not, uh, they, they were not able to meet for, for a few months. So it could be good for them to meet again and do something together and small plays, uh, young professionals or life members and so on. Every uh, organizational unit in the region uh, which is able to do something uh, locally uh, is, uh, is uh, addressed by this proposal. That I repeat is just a proposal and we would like to polish the details uh, with all of you during this meeting today. Uh, so the idea is to engage members, of course, uh, to, to, to remind them that the IEEE is still there and uh, we will comply with the local regulations and we do the best that we can with this regulation. But also these events can be used as uh, recruitment events. We saw that we are failing in recruitment. It's very uh, difficult for us to bring new members or to recover uh, members that left. Uh, but maybe with these small meetings, we can start doing some recruitment and we can organize uh, something for people who might be interested in joining. Right. Some uh, examples, some things that we could do uh, uh, following this, uh, this idea, we can have technical talks. We can invite distinguished speakers remotely so we can have a good speaker who is located, I don't know, in Egypt, and we can organize a local meeting in Portugal, and people will be there listening uh, remotely. Maybe we can have a screen, streaming or something, and there will be live questions, and maybe there will be discussion among the people there with the, with the remote speaker, for example. We can have panels of uh, some people uh, locally sitting together, uh, two meters distance, right, and uh, discussing about technology or other topics, how to cope with the pandemic, how uh, different uh, communication technologies can help, whatever. We can have workshops, of course. We can, yeah, we can have, uh, we can have boards or we can have electronics uh, so that students go there and learn to do something hands-on. Uh, this type of things uh, connected to some remote thing. Uh, we can have hackathons, contests uh, related to technology. Uh, we can have, uh, this is uh, student branch chapters. We can stream uh, uh, lectures or training. This is good for student branches because universities, they have the, the video set up available. So it will be more or less easy to have big screen there when they are projecting uh, something happening remotely and we have a number of people, 10 people in the room physically uh, meeting together and doing, doing things uh, in sync with what is happening remotely. We can have even cross-sectional online meetings where we have people from one section and then people from other section. We have five people here, five, 10, 20 people there and they are connected somehow using this online and then they can discuss 
uh, or do things together uh, in the same way that we used to do with the cross-sectional SYP uh, congresses, right? Uh, they can discuss or they uh, they can uh, uh, talk about future collaboration and so on. So these are examples. The idea is always to have hybrid meetings, start to have hybrid meetings where some people, a limited number of people are physically together in the same room with uh, physical distancing and so on, but together and they can talk uh, face to face and at the same time we have uh, something uh, online and, uh, and remote because we are now allowed to do that. Uh, yeah. So again, the proposal for region supporting this we can, as we mentioned, we can support uh, giving, uh, providing speakers, guests, ideas. We can connect uh, people who are working on the same uh, thing and so on. And we can also provide financial support on request. As you know, we have not been able to organize many things, uh, many physical things in the, for the year. So there is still budget available in the region that uh, we believe we could make a, a good use of uh, by, by doing these things, right? So if the local organizing unit uh, has some expenses related to this, uh, the, the region can allocate some budget to help or to cover the, the, the expenses. For example, uh, maybe you need to pay a little bit for uh, hiring a venue or the equipment there, right? Or the uh, video projection or whatever, or microphones there. If has, this has a cost, we can help on that. Some material or giveaways that you need to use or, or physical material to do some hands-on training or session or something. We can provide some uh, refreshment or snacks uh, to the people who are there, some food, uh, light food. Uh, then we can we can pay for that, right? Or we can uh, help in paying for that. There will be no travel allowed and no travel expenses uh, for this uh, type of, of meetings yet. Uh, so there will be a small committee. We decided to have a small committee uh, uh, to uh, evaluate this uh, uh, funds allocation, this funds uh, request for for um, um, uh, units who, who request that and this committee will be composed by the three vice chair member activities student activities technical activities treasurer and director elect so you can send a, a request for that for this budget or support in any of any type and then uh, we can assign uh, some budget right we will try to do this in a very efficient and quick way so there will be no hard deadlines in the very future in the long future and we will try not to ask for many documentation in this case because as i mentioned this is supposed to be a temporary transient solution while this situation is like this if we delay things for three months then we'll, the, the, the situation will be different better or worse but different and then there is no point on that so we will try to have a quick uh, turnaround uh, 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 when providing uh, answers to the to the request right of course, this funding will be uh, this limited, of, uh, like everything, and it will be dependent on the number of members that can be reached, and the proposal, and the size of the uh, organizational unit. Are, we have la very large and very small sections and chapters and student branches and groups. Uh, so depending on that, uh, of course, the budget will need to be adjusted, right? Uh, and yeah, the idea is to launch like a first phase uh, now, I'll start with this and see how it works because we don't know actually how well how uh, how welcome will the, this be uh, for, for, uh, by our members and by our, our volunteers so we can start doing some things now in our first phase then we will evaluate how it's working in, in all uh, let's say in all means right it's, uh, it's something that uh, we are uh, making good use for uh, engaging our members uh, they they like to attend uh, are we able to recruit people? Is the money that we are spending well spent on that? And so on. So we will be trying to reevaluate the program and adapt a little bit uh, as uh, while the pandemic is evolving and hopefully uh, while the pandemic is finishing. And then uh, at some point we can come back to, uh, um, let's say, normal life or kind of normal life in the, in the near future, in, in a couple of months or whenever. Okay. So this is the proposal. Again, uh, all these things are proposed. Uh, this is what we thought, but uh, we would like to uh, listen to you uh, to your um, ideas, uh, uh, suggestions on how to improve uh, this uh, this program to support the the, the different units. And uh, yeah, that, that's how uh, why this uh, this meeting was uh, conveyed by the by the director to listen whether you like this program, whether you like uh, whether you would like to see different things here, or you have uh, better ideas. Or, or anything that you might uh, uh, suggest, right? So this is what I wanted to share.
I will uh, return my, the floor to Magdalena and then uh, we can continue the uh, discussion now. Okay, um, could you please, um, unless uh, somebody asked for it, can you can we please remove the slides, uh, Antonio's slides? Okay, thank you. So as Antonio said, now is the moment to hear all of you. So we will open the floor to all of you. Yes, that we need to be somehow organized. So if you uh, just show your hand, if you want to be, if you want to speak, then um, we will give you the floor one by one. You can you can share with us whatever you want. I mean, your experience so far during this pandemic, uh, what you think about the proposal that Antonio pre presented, uh, and uh, your how quick you can send us a proposal for having uh, these meetings. Whatever concern you have, whatever suggestion you have, we are here to to listen to to your input. So please go ahead, and we can start. Antonio, may I remind you that I don't have uh, the hand yeah. facility here, so I'm sorry that you are going to need to take care of me. It's fine. But John Fuso uh, has uh, the the right hand. John. Thank you very much. Um, it has been worrisome to us in the African um, area office, especially in Nigeria. Which at the right time it is a great idea and is sustainable because COVID 19 has come to stay with us for a long time. This we can sustain the further increase of the membership. What we have done in Nigeria is we set up, because in Nigeria we have six geopolitical zones, so we set up coordinators to manage all these zones. Right now, no school is in session, on the further notice, but the coordinators are working. And then we've been able to enlighten people to renew their membership and create a membership drive virtually. One is going on presently. And then we are also able to reactivate some student branches and some councillors in um, docile for a while. So thank you, Director Elect, for this proposal and it's workable. You will get to hear from us soon. Thank you, Jan. What's happening on our screens now? I've, I think that we are seeing Adil's screen at the moment. Not me, I'm seeing you people, and I'm happy to see you all. Yes, but... Now could... in particular, I'm seeing you, Adam. Brilliant. If Adil could tell us how he got the whole screen of pictures, I would appreciate. I can do it. Uh, we don't need to do that. I mean, I think the scope is to see whoever is speaking at that at the moment. So right now we are, we are seeing you. Otherwise, we are going to be very much distracted. Right now, we are seeing your beautiful uh, pictures behind you and yourself. So um, who who goes next? Antonio. I cannot see any raised hands now. Uh, I can see uh, we have Khalifef. I, I cannot see them. Jordan section. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, holding this meeting, uh, which has some engagement, which was different from the previous ones, which is, I mean, much better. Um, there are two few things I would like to mention. Uh, first, in my opinion, um, IEEE. Um, has they didn't take uh, the conferences issues into account um, in what we expected for example many of the conferences uh, switched to virtual conferences but they kept the same registration fees 
or they just, you know, lower very uh, little amounts. And unfortunately, we didn't see IEEE uh, stepping in in this, uh, you know, kind of uh, situation. And for example, regulating this issue. Um, I have conferences which uh, waived the fees completely, and I have conferences which uh, barely, uh, you know, waived for us very few, uh, uh, you know, uh, amount of money. And unfortunately, they use this pandemic to make more money for the conference since they don't have cost and they or maybe they have minimal cost, but no, nobody controls them. And I try to email this uh, to, you know, the conference management in IEEE and they say just they can lower 25 percent from the cost and they don't have to. I didn't see that IEEE uh, played a, a vital role in controlling the conference costs, the registrations. Many of my colleagues uh, dropped their papers since the cost was high and unjustified. Uh, there is no food, no catering, no hotel. So why to, uh, you know, um, to charge high? And uh, nobody was uh, controlling them. And the other thing that I was expecting IEEE to do is to offer um, online resources for free was offered. Um, while, for example, many other, uh, you know, publishers, many other uh, um, digital content providers. They opened their libraries. They, you know, um, offered more resources to people during this pandemic. For example, we have many uh, digital, uh, you know, courses and online resources that could be offered uh, for our members during this pandemic for free. And this way, maybe uh, we could also use that uh, as a leverage for us to maintain the memberships. Uh, we didn't see this as well. I mean, um, I, I wish if we have a page dedicated for the pandemic. Currently, the only page we have is the, the Spectrum. That should be a strict term for uh, you know COVID nineteen, which has very limited resources. So I, I appreciate if I should be also can uh, provide more uh, digital resources for free, uh, and maybe have a dedicated pages uh, for this pandemic, uh, where it it shows how it's really uh, contributed to uh, their members. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you a lot, um, Antonio. Would you like to answer? Um to that or maybe yeah. Skype can answer the part of the conferences it's up to you okay i will i will let Sahib uh, uh, reply to conference issue uh regarding the the opening of some resources i think well i don't i don't think i'm sure that uh, uh, all the papers in explore which are related to epidemics and covid-19 they are free of charge for everyone in IEEE and uh, so this is available as a service that uh, they uh, we are providing to humanity and uh, the, the central point that uh, they created to deal with this uh, situation was indeed this spectrum page so they chose to put everything in this spectrum it doesn't mean that it's only a spectrum but uh, the platform that they used to to centralize uh, everything related to covid-19 was spectrum uh, website right so uh, this uh, covid-19 spectrum uh, compiles everything coming from the different uh, units and different boards uh, uh, within IEEE, so uh, everything is uh, is there. Uh, providing uh, this uh, online communication, I know that they are uh, having this uh, webinars uh, for free for many people. In some ways, I I can agree with what you said, but uh, more things should be provided to members, and in part, this is what we are trying to do. And now with this proposal, uh, trying to spend money in serving our members in this uh, difficult time. So I partly agree with you, and this, this is what we are trying to solve. Sorry, Antonio, for the digital resources, Springer opened their digital books, e-books uh, for, for free, not only the resources related to pandemic. So my point is uh, maybe if IEEE can open up some maybe keynote speeches, uh, past uh, digital resources, not only the one related to pandemic, not only the paper related to pandemic. This is most of the publisher has done, and I can provide you with emails and with links for for their resources. Okay. I'm saying some of some of the content, but not not everything. Sure. Content which is not uh, uh, completely re uh, related to COVID-19, but uh, yes, 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 or whatever. Yeah. yeah, this this decision has not been taken yet. I, I know. Yeah. So this is Sahib. Uh, uh, I can I can answer so some of your uh, questions, Bala, uh, regarding the conferences and the conference and the courses and keynote speeches. Better. So I, I can start with the keynote speeches and, and uh, online content first. 
Um, uh, along with Spectrum, I actually have one more website called Innovation at Work. IEEE.org. I will put the link of that website. Sorry, I have a bit of background noise coming. Uh, if, if everybody can mute. Um, so, so uh, with this website, what IEEE has been doing, IEEE has been putting online courses free of cost as well as webinars and uh, um, uh, articles related uh, some related to covid-19 some generally related to technical topics so i would recommend everyone to have a look at that website they are regularly conducting webinars there's almost one every week uh, so there's new content being churned out uh, on a regular basis um uh, I'll put the link in and and hopefully that will answer a part of the question that you're answering uh, that you're asking uh, allah um, uh, secondly, regarding the conferences, uh, so, so the last couple of months have been quite interesting because all of this has been uh, quite unprecedented. Um, uh, so so it, most of the work that the conferences teams have been doing is uh, at this point in time trying to cope uh, and help with our, our existing conferences uh, to be able to either virtual events or to be able to move uh, their events to later date and and make uh, announcement of that. Uh, we do have a, a dedicated emergency uh, emergency response team uh, from the IEEE uh, responsible for conferences, uh, who can help conferences uh, IEEE sponsored conferences in sections, regions, chapters, etc. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll post the uh, email address of that. Um, in in, uh, in 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 this uh, webex chat as well. By the way, all the links that I'm talking about and the email address, they are available on the Region Eight website as well. So part of the work we have been doing and mentioned uh, uh, back in our spring meeting is that we have been developing these. Uh, uh, we have been modifying our uh, website pages, especially in technical activities, to have all of this information available for our sections. But I appreciate. There's, it's 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 uh, uh, all all of this content can can be a bit too much as well. I I hope that partially answers some of the bits you were asking, Gala. Hi. Yeah, about the fees. Um, why I to be didn't control uh, the fees? There should be much reduced during the pandemic, and many conferences didn't really reduce uh, their fees. I, I withdraw a paper that they asked for 600 uh, euro for online conference. I don't know why. I mean, I have to withdraw it. And I have another conference who asked just for 50 euro uh, for a registration fee. So we didn't see any control from IEEE about uh, this matter. I mean, yes, yes, you're right. There, there is no no direct control from IEEE on that at this point in time. Um, uh, I'll have to check if there are any discussions happening, but what I have personally seen is that some conferences, if they are doing the event virtually, they have dropped the fee down substantially. There may be some cases where that has not been done, and, and that we will have to check, and I'll, I'll, I'll check internally. So I'll come back to you, Allah. I'll write maybe in a, in a week or two back to you, but I'll have to check with the IEEE conferences committee if they are planning uh, to look into this matter. Thank you for thank you. Thank you. Can I can I add something here? Adam speaking. Um, uh, IEEE essentially is, is distributed organization and uh, a conference organizers has have um, a lot of flexibility. Not everything is sort of centrally controlled. Um, and so um, I suspect that um, many of these things uh, have been allowed to go um, as before um, uh, on the basis that uh, local organizers uh, will use common sense and adapt these fees. Um, that could be probably uh, made more stringent and uh, more rigorous um, by, by the center. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, center doesn't want to impose uh, this kind of um, uh, strict rules on local organizers. So uh, we have on one hand freedom, on the other hand, um, 
we see here a necessity of some form of uh, centralized um, uh, intervention. Um, um, one more thing, I just sent a ch uh, in chat um, a comment about certain aspect of IEEE operations, which you might uh, use in your, in your um, activities. IEEE offers WebEx for sections um, and Google Meet for others. And uh, I sent a link where you can see what happens there and you can register uh, your, um, uh, your interest in using these facilities. As far as I know, it's for free. We are, we are having it for free at the moment. Um, uh, um, so um, make use of it. Thank you. Uh, here is Bernardo. May I add uh, a comment on this? I don't know if it is my time. Uh, Bernardo, it's, it's okay. Um, I would just like to remind everybody that um, we have a very concrete uh, team uh, to discuss here. That is, how can we help uh, all of you in organizing uh, these distributed um, meetings that or hybrid meetings, whatever you would like to call it, uh, that Antonio was introducing. So we we are happy to hear all your concerns. That's uh, please don't don't misunderstand me. But I think um, it will be good if we focus on on the future. Uh, all your concerns, we can listen to them and you can send them to us. We can try to solve uh, all those. Uh, problems that you have in the past uh, so they will not repeat in the in the future but uh, I would like to to have an effective meeting in the sense that when we finish this meeting we will all go back thinking that okay we have a plan we have a proposal we like this proposal and we are going to propose things to serve our members in our sections or all over the, the region so sorry for this long speech bernardo please feel free to say whatever you want yes thanks uh, magdalena um as you know uh, or uh, in italy we had uh, um, this year a, a very rich uh, program um, the section uh, um, planned the four conferences this year only the section and of course, we had to rearrange uh, a lot of things uh, because of the uh, COVID uh, emergency. Um, I would like to share with uh, you um, uh, an important uh, uh, service, an important opportunity I received by IEEE. Uh, every Monday, I'm receiving now uh, the situation of all the conferences promoted by IEEE in Italy section. It's like a, a short uh, in, um, re report reporting uh, all the scheduling. And this is was important, and in general is important, because uh, as we know, we have society that uh, organized conferences uh, in, uh, in each country. Now, of course, I'm speaking about Italy. And sometimes there can be some conflict uh, of interest. And this was important also to understand if uh, I had to postpone a conference and to reallocate in another date to understand in the best way if this could have and could uh, um, cause uh, conflict of interest with uh, other conferences. So this was, uh, uh, in my case, uh, really useful. And um, my suggestion is uh, possibly uh, why not uh, uh, to uh, that each section chair can receive this information in order to uh, better have a schedule. This is on, on the conferences. Uh, the other comment, uh, which is uh, looking uh, also at the future, during these uh, times, during these uh, months, uh, we, uh, and personally, I try to, to launch, uh, like to say, a challenge uh, to invest as much as possible to the young, um, on the young generation, I mean, student branch and young profession, for two reasons. First of all, they are, of course, important for uh, membership and they will be the new generation, so they are fundamental. 
and in this sense uh, probably I do not uh, add uh, uh, anything particularly new, we know that. But uh, the opportunity is that they are really familiar and used with the use uh, with the use of um, internet, of course, platforms of virtual meetings and so on. And uh, as an uh, interesting result uh, is that, uh, for example, with the young professional, generally we had the group of the officer working uh, one, two person or three person working and uh, trying to promote initiatives in Italy. And now we have an active working group of 25 people. And uh, my question uh, and my to rejuvenate, uh, I thank uh, I thank uh, Antonio because uh, um, this was uh, announced by Antonio is to try to support to support as much as possible their action and possible cross action cross meetings with uh, uh, student branch and uh, young professional affinity group of the other section in Region A. Um, now, for example, uh, we received uh, an important support. Uh, you know, we have Melecon 2020 next week, uh, and there is uh, uh, the student branch and affinity group um, uh, meeting for which uh, we received uh, support, uh, for example, by Vinko Lesic. Uh, and uh, uh, this is really important, but um, really uh, the sensation, my, uh, my feeling is that. Uh, uh, young generation in some way are more uh, prepared to, um, uh, like to say, to face this situation. And uh, what it was interesting and uh, I wanted to share with you is that they uh, um, used this opportunity, and, as I said, this group of 25 persons is really an important group and we hope to share their activity with uh, the region and not only in Italy and with other sections. Just um, this is, um, okay, I conclude here, of course, uh, uh, there are many things, but I don't want to uh, take the floor for a long time. Thanks. Thank you, Bernardo. Um, any answer to Bernardo from the upcom side. Okay, doesn't look like so. Um, we can uh, again thank you, Bernardo, for the information. And I agree that that uh, information regarding the conference in the section is very important. I plan to join virtually the meeting, uh, the Melicon next year. I mean, next week that I was. Uh, supposed to attend face to face and hopefully it will be a very a very good meeting uh so i think the next uh, person who raised uh his hand was ahmed uh, hassan i think uh, thank you magdalena for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, uh egypt section um starting the pandemic we uh, we had a strategy to be closer to industry, closer to government in this uh, difficult time, and to uh, search for uh, grants and make uh, a lot of participation in projects. So we managed to have um, uh, MOUs signed with uh, IBM. Uh, in addition, uh, we got a grant for uh, future studies beyond the pandemic in order to um, uh, relook uh, on uh, Egypt Vision 2030 and uh, what is uh, the effect of the uh, pandemic and what will be uh, the situation beyond the pandemic. Uh, so we have these sectors including uh, information technology, transport, supply chain uh, and uh, industry. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, some some conferences, of course, uh, has been cancelled. Have been cancelled. Others are postponed. But um, uh, we uh, had managed to have uh, some conferences that are virtual by design. Uh, 
from the starting of the conference. It's designed to be fully virtual. I will uh, share with uh, you uh, one of them. And uh, I think we uh, could, with the, the local organizers' uh, efforts, we could um, have $20 uh, registration fees and uh, exclusive 30% discount for IEEE members. In addition, uh, we organized the site uh, pandemic hackathon. Uh, and I think one of um, uh, the, uh, the merits of uh, this pandemic is that we increased uh, section activities with other sections. So I think Mauritius um, uh, section has participated in this hackathon, and uh, I think we, we had some time to uh, connect with others. Uh, last but not least, we uh, have invited um, Vincent Chen, uh, the president of uh, the Communication Society, um, an event in Nile University uh, um, just uh, last uh, Thursday, and um, it, it was uh, a very uh, good event. Uh, the, the president of the Communication Society presented to the leaders of the Egyptian government, the leaders of the Egyptian industry, uh, and all IEEE members at the same time. So uh, I think we, we can manage. Thank you for the proposal. Thank you for uh, uh, managing the, this uh, event. Uh, and thank you for giving me the time to share with you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the, that information with us. Um, as you know, we are aware, at least the OPCOM uh, members are aware of the of the a hackathon in Egypt, and we are very happy. Um, the rest of of the section chair, you may be interested in knowing that there were 200 teams uh, competing in this particular hackathon. Uh, so that means a lot of interest. Uh, there were only three uh, who were selected by the judges at the best, and hopefully the rest 197 will not be discouraged because of that. So, yes, there is a potential of organizing these meetings with other sections with participation from all sections of, uh, or at least from many sections of uh, Region 8. And uh, we are happy for these initiatives. Thank you very much again. And um, if there is uh, anybody who would like to uh, say something with respect to um, what we are heard, you are most welcome. Otherwise, I will give the floor to the next uh, person who raised her hand in this case, who is Katarina. Hello, Magdalena. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, here in, in Portugal, we have, well, I think we have been coping quite well with this uh, new situation. Um, we've been able to keep almost all the meetings uh, uh, going online because everyone is online right now. And I think it was, well, we have uh, upsides and downsides. So, for instance, we had an initial meeting for the, the launching of the blockchain group that probably if it was just um, in person, it would have something like 30 or 40 people. And as we hosted it online, it had something like 120 uh, participants. So um, not all is bad in, this, in these times. And um, we think that this idea of having hybrid events can be the way to go since people that are close by are able to attend and people that are not able to be close by will still have some uh, chance to participate. Um, our internal meetings of the section and general assembly that, that we usually have, we are planning to do it this July in, uh, in uh, using uh, WebEx. And uh, I think um, Something is lost when you cannot be face to face, of course, but I think we are we are coping uh, and most of the events, for instance, we had uh, EduCon um, that was supposed to be in Porto, 
uh, earlier um, uh, last month and it, it was in fact online and um, it, it was really heavily participated and I think it was a good surrogate for an online conference. Um, uh, my my final remark would be maybe a question or some in some sense some um, uh, some enlightenments on on the proposal. How would it work? So would sections uh, would be applying or each organizational unit would be applying to Vision 8? Uh, would it be uh, which kind of description of the goals and the agenda for the activity? Because I think um, I would like to congratulate you because I think it's a good idea to keep people moving uh, because uh, meetings, we can easily put them online gatherings it's harder to put them online and people are waiting for this COVID season to pass and maybe we need to move a little bit forward because maybe it will take a little bit longer so i don't know if antonio or madalena could you explain a little bit further how do you think this would work thank you yeah i, I can reply to that uh, so we were waiting for your feedback of all of you uh, before defining completely uh, what is required. So maybe we can make some changes today. But uh, our initial idea was to do something very, uh, let's say, uh, very fast, right? We don't want an uh, application of 10 pages that you have to write 10 pages of application with a lot of details and so on, because that will not be effective in the time frame that we are aiming at, right? So a short description of the uh, of the meeting that you intend, like uh, place, uh, uh, date, time, number of people that is allowed there, what you plan to do, uh, and then an uh, estimation of the cost that you would like to uh, to be funded or the support that you will need in any case. I think that's enough. Um, I don't know if Adam, as treasurer, will need something else. Uh, if that's the case, uh, uh, he can he can say uh, it now. But a uh, short description of this. And then we will evaluate how the things are, are going, right? Of course, we will ask uh, how it, how did it go? Uh, was it successful or not? And then uh, for the second phase, we will try to improve. But my, my personal idea is that something that can be done quickly so that you can organize a meeting in short time and we can decide in short time. And uh, let's, as you say, it's very important to uh, get things moving uh, again. Adam, I don't know if, if you agree with uh, with me what we're asking. Yes, I, we don't need any formalities. Uh, we we'll need very few formalities, really. Description of the event, description of the budget support you required, and uh, and we will pass the money to the organizers. Um, uh, ideally, I would suggest to pass um, uh, any funds to sections, uh, even if chapters are organizing those events, because then sections will be um, uh, overlooking the follow-up how the money is spent. Um, and one more thing also, I suggest that any requirements for this support are sent to Antonio, um, uh, who probably naturally chairs this, this com committee. Um, and so uh, we, you, then he will, he will distribute those requirements to any, uh, any other members of the committee. Thank you. Yeah, final, final thing. Maybe what we can do is to update, uh, after we finish this, this meeting, to update the slides that I presented uh, with this information that Adam is uh, presenting and send to all the section shares, even to those who were not able to attend, so that they know the procedure uh, Yeah, with this, uh, uh, let's say, the actual procedure for, for how to apply, uh, and then we can move on. Okay, thank you, Katarina. Thank you, uh, Antonio and Adam. Um, so, um, don't get nervous, those of you that have raised your hand. I have a list. I'm going through the list. Uh, so, you will have the, the chance to, to speak. So, the next person in the list is Masiek, our uh, student activity vice chair. And Masiek, welcome to the meeting. Uh, you were not in the original uh, participant list and we missed uh, introducing you but now you're here so please um, just uh, you have the floor right now 
Thank you, Magdalena. Uh, my name is Maciej Borowka. I'm the vice chair, originate vice chair for student activities and student activities committee chair. Uh, it's not a problem. I didn't uh, feel the, the doodle poll. So this is why I was on, on the list. So sorry for that. Um, so I would like to uh, say a few words about the hackathon. Um, that was an initiative from uh, from Egypt that that originates SAC um, support financially. Uh, as uh, Magdalena said, we got uh, 200 um, teams that particip participated, and the three winners are from Cyprus, Spain, and Lebanon. Uh, so my congratulations for those teams. Uh, and uh, my question for you is if you have any uh, any ideas about this kind of, um, of contests or, or projects, just let us know. We are preparing uh, two new projects uh, that will take some time to... Uh, so meantime, if you have any ideas about the smaller projects, uh, please let us know. And what is really important that for two months already, there were no face-to-face um, -face meeting within the students. Uh, and that will hurt our, uh, that will hit our retention rates in, in case of, of students is already minus 10 percent. Uh, but on the other side, some um, sections actually rise the number of the students. So uh, do not stick to the to the general numbers because um, if there are activities, if there is a good offer for students, uh, those numbers will, will automatically rise up. Uh, so what I can suggest uh, is to, if you can, contact with your student branches and ask about if they are willing to prepare uh, micro events uh, that we are now uh, as a part of, of this first phase of, of this plan that we want to uh, support uh, also financially if, if, if necessary. Uh, so please um, reach out to your student branches and uh, let us know um, if there are any interest in, in having such um, micro events. Please remember there is a ban for uh, traveling on from, from the IEEE side. So uh, we are thinking about the, the, the really local uh, meetings. Uh, so I would like to just open the, the, the discussion and uh, we are awaiting your feedback and emails from your site. Uh, our email is region r8sac, region 8 sac at IEEE.org. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Masek. So Masek has repeated information that um, was given already by Antonio in with respect to IEEE it does not allow any uh, business trip, IEEE related trip. Uh, so as we explained before, as Antonio explained before, um, these local meetings are, must be local with participation, of course, virtual participation of people not in that city or in that locality or people who would like to travel and then uh, will not uh, ask for reimbursement because that is what we are not allowed right now to do. Um, so the next person in the in the list of uh, of people who raised their hand is Mohammad Al Muhaini. Mohammad. Yeah, thank you, Magdalena. Uh, just to have a suggestion and to have also a comment. Uh, we have organized many online virtual meetings here in the section. Uh, more than 20, 22 or 23 events in the last few months. Uh, we have used Zoom for most of our meetings, if not all of them. And this is not like centralized decision by the section. Even uh, branches, for example, and chapters, they prefer to use Zoom. I know that IEEE, they offer the WebEx uh, needs the registration, pre-registration, uh, IEEE before like a few days or a week. I don't remember the required time to get the approval for the WebEx access. Do you guys study other platforms to be used in the coming days? Zoom or Microsoft Teams? I don't know about Europe, but the 
are very popular here in the, in the region here and used for most of our meetings in IEEE and even non IEEE events. The other actually comment is regarding the availability of online local meetings for others. I think it's about the time, uh, I mean, it's a perfect time actually to join forces in events and make events also accessible for others. I'm not talking about the cross-sectional events where they are designed actually to be cross-sectional. I'm talking about the local events. I mean, an, an event in Saudi Arabia can be open for others also to join. It's online, I mean, if there is a capacity, why not? And we, when we organize some events, some of also of neighboring sections attended our events and we would love actually to attend their events. What I do suggest is that Region 8 can organize this where they collect the information for all local events and just share them with others. How to register, for example, in an event in Europe or Western Saudi Arabia or Bahrain. I think our members would love actually to join such events if there is capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, actually, this is, uh, I will give the floor later on if any anybody else want to answer your uh, your uh, comments and but what i would like to share with you now is that if you go to the drive where, where we have uh, put the reports that we received from some of you uh you will see that many sections well at least some of the sections they have uh, uh, the list of their activities in their web page um with a link to the activity which is really useful you can go one by one and it is it is uh, something really interesting to see how many activities um, the section have had during this difficult time. And this is something that we can share and we can organize it. We will need to talk about it uh, within the outcome, but I think we can organize it in several ways. To start with, uh, those sections that are willing to share their activities with the rest of the sections in, in the region, um, my initial suggestion that I gave already to, I don't remember which section it was this morning, is that you can just uh, use the distribution list for uh, Region 8 directors, uh, Region 8 section chairs, sorry, and just send uh, to everybody um, those, uh, those reports. In some case, in the case I'm talking about, it's a quarterly report, I think it was from Sweden, uh, Samar Deo, uh, actually. And uh, I told him, uh, if the other sections uh, chairs do not object, um, the, the easiest thing to do is just to send your quarterly reports uh, to everybody. And if they want, they will just go through the list of our activities and click on the, on the link and see what you have done. So I think it's a very good idea. And this is something that we should help a, in uh, in sharing all this information of course there are other possibilities uh, that is having a, a web page in the region 8 web page an area there where all the section chairs just put there their information and if uh, you people like to do that we are here to serve you so we would ask our electronic communication coordinator to open up that uh, site and put all the information there uh, as it come. But we will need your help on that because it's not something that we we can start right now and then forget about it in the in the near future. So my question here, I just uh, sent a yes no um, um, email um, to us, to all the section chairs who are attending this meeting. If are you interested in receiving this? No need to do say it now. Just send me a yes no answer, uh, and we will compile the answers and we will see what we can do. But thank you for suggesting this. It's really I think it's very important. So now, if, are there any comments for for Mohammed? Side. I would like to ask Mohammed a question. He says about Zoom as a pref preferred tool. Um, uh, can you elaborate a little bit about that? 
Zoom is used because, yeah, it is used, for example, in our university to, in teaching classes. So once the students actually are familiar with one platform, they would like to use it for any other activity, online activities. So it is very popular here. It's easy as an interface. And once you have the account, you have the account. You can just start the meeting right away. Maybe this is the only difference between Webex and Zoom, where Zoom, it's, it's, you have the control over the meetings. Webex through IEEE, you need to request an access. And this is my question. I mean, uh, did you consider other platforms to be supported by IEEE for IEEE events? Or you still support Webex to be the only platform for IEEE events? Thank you, Mohammed. Any other comment? Or I move to the next speaker. Okay, the next person in uh, in the list is Nasser. Uh, but yes? Mohammed was asking a question that nobody answered. He was asking whether IEEE will support Zoom or only it will support Webex. Uh, this is the question. Okay, I'm sorry I missed I missed that question. Well, Webex, as you know, is free, completely 100% free. I don't know about Zoom. We will need to ask that question to IEEE. So we take Can note of this question and we will ask it. Are we okay? Yeah, what I can add, uh, Magdalena, is that Zoom is not free uh, for, the, for the needs that we typically have uh, in IEEE. It's free only for limited number of people, limited uh, length of the of the meetings. So it's not uh, the right choice for free. Uh, I don't think that IEEE is going to spend money on a different platform because they have this contract with uh, Cisco that was renewed not long ago, I think. Uh, so at the moment, I don't think that they are uh, uh, spending money on different platform, right? Different thing is that I know that some sections are doing that. They are buying uh, licenses of Zoom for a smaller price, uh, and this is something that is always possible to do. But I don't think that this will happen, uh, let's say, centrally from my Tripoli. Thank you, Thank you for your comment, Antonio. Mona has access uh, in the UK and Ireland section to Zoom. Um, and um, uh, pass, I, I, I communicated with UK and Ireland section about that. Um, and uh, we obviously can consider possibility of, of providing Zoom facility for Region 8, but we need to look at the detail. It's, uh, it's not a trivial answer. It, I looked provision of this and it costs quite a lot of money, but we, we could consider that. Thank you, Adam, for your comment. I would like now to move to the next uh, person who was willing to talk, who is Nasser Assem. Nasser? Yeah, thank you, Magdalena. And uh, first, you. I'd like just to follow up on, uh, on the last uh, suggestion and question. In fact, we have used Zoom and uh, the subscription is around, I think, uh, a few hundred dollars, 300, I think. And uh, the, I mean the the number, the number of participants is uh, good and uh, high enough for our section, for example. And in fact, we did that because it has been at the beginning. It, it was not easy, frankly, to schedule uh, meetings using Webex. It's it's a whole process, and it takes time to interact, etc. So that's why, just from practical reason, we did that. Uh, and uh, so that's something probably other sections. Uh, but anyway, my comment with respect to that. And I have a question. With, and we thank you for your help with respect to, uh, of course, helping the sections uh, during these times. And my question is this, uh, this funding, should it come at once at the level of the section or can it come in, uh, in batches? I mean, for example, we have interest from students branch and then we submit something and then probably later on another application for another funding, smaller funding in from a chapter, etc. So this is my question. Or should we put everything, wait until we have one proposal and submit to the region? This is one question. And the other thing, 
it's uh, I must say it is unfortunate for our section here in Morocco because uh, we have large universities. We have dozen universities, especially I'm talking with respect to the students, our members, students. And most this uh, we have several in Casablanca, etc. And most students do not live in the city where the university is. And therefore, these students are not on campus right now. So our sections are kind of, our, our students' branches are kind of dispersed. And uh, we don't have that mass, for example, to have distributed meeting here. We have dozen here, and uh, it's it's hard to do that in our case. And the other thing, just in the last few days, really, very lately, uh, the, the, the lockdown has been eased a little bit in Morocco. So now we have two zones. We still have one zone that is kind of the lockdown is enforced, but the other zone is uh, it has been relaxed a bit and uh, and students can move around officially. I am talking about the government decision. So for me, it just was, it would have been better if we allowed students after all these few months where they could not move to be able to move and, and fund their, their travel. But it's not, I mean, this is just a question with respect to that probably. And uh, now my other question, if you don't mind, is with respect, I would have loved to see the Africa Council represented or at least have an official representative here in this meeting. I know that many sections from Africa are present today, but I remember from the last uh, meeting, uh, uh, the Africa Council meeting that was held like a, a month and a half now, I think the 30th of April, and we talked about a representative of the Africa Council that can uh, inter uh, interface with Region 8, and this would have been a nice opportunity for, I, I mean, Frankly, probably this is not the right platform to express that, but uh, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the with Africa sections. I mean, this is a big question, and I asked this, and Antonio was very kind to address this question in the last orientation meeting that the Region 8 has done. Now, I have another question with respect to the fees that are particular to countries like ours, third world country, but probably this is not the right platform, but if you want me to ask, I can go ahead. Otherwise, I'm gonna give up the floor right, for other participants. Thank you very much. Um, mm, Nasser, thank you for your yes. comment. With respect to the Africa Council, uh, I think you know that we do have a representative uh, who is officially an appointed member of the committee, who is the Africa Council Chair. This was not a meeting for uh, for the appointed uh, members. We are having a meeting for the appointed members uh, next weekend, and all the appointed members, which means all the subcommittee chairs and other appointed members like uh, like him, uh, are supposed to be there. Vincent uh, should be there so we are not forgetting at all uh, africa council and we are very much interested in uh, helping africa council uh, to grow to help in a different way that region is doing the african sections so we are the first one that are interested in doing that so don't worry um I hope that he will be joining us uh, next weekend. And, uh, and if you would like to, I can invite all the section chairs uh, of the Africa Council to meet also next weekend. Although this, the scope is similar, but it's different because we will have the subcommittee chairs there. So thank you for bringing this up, but be sure that uh, we are um, doing everything we think uh, can be helpful for the Africa Council um, and for the section and subsections from Africa. I don't know if there is uh, other comments or answer to your questions from no. people. Okay. Thank you for this clarification, Magdalena. Thank you. Yeah, Magdalena, there was this yes. question from uh, from Nasser about the uh, the, the students not uh, residing in the cities, and yeah, we are aware of that, and it's certainly a pity. We we know that this program or proposal that we are presenting will not 
reach every member in every section is impossible uh, in these times. Uh, yeah, what what uh, what we can do is to to do our best uh, given the circumstances and the regulations that we have, and hope that uh, these uh, circumstances will improve in the coming months. But it's a pity that uh, not not everyone will be able to meet in person yet. Thank you, Antonio. So, any other comment for Mohammed? For for the, the 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 application to these funds, this help from Region Eight. I, I mean, can it come in different big? I mean, or ways, or just one at the level of the section? I ask this. Question. Oh yes, yes, yes. That was your question. Sorry, Nasser, we didn't answer that. No, I think we can have uh, many of, of these. Uh, it is the idea to have distributed meetings. Uh, we know that there are large sections. Morocco is geographically spread, uh, and uh, yeah, other sections as well, and some other are smaller. So anything is uh, is possible, right? So if you can have like two, three different meetings in different places of the region, that's more than welcome. Thank you again. As I understand, sorry, I just add here to not to uh, to the answer of Antonio. As I understand, Nasser wanted to know whether one application needs to be made. No, uh, you you can apply any time you like for any meeting you like, and uh, uh, could be several applications. Thank you. I think this is what Antonio meant. Our next uh, person in the list. Uh, is Anton. Anton, you're wel welcome to speak now. Yes, I'm here. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, what we want to share is our experience in this virtual meeting. Our section was held in a relatively small conference. It was regular. It's um, This year we were doing this for the third time. Each time the number of participants is increasing, and this year there were 160 participants who presented their works. Uh, due to restriction, we had to do it online, and we used the Zoom platform, uh, which was more or less the most popular one in our university, and it was no particular preference. And the experience was quite nice in a way that it is less stressing that organizing the offline meeting, you don't need to run and uh, solve some local issues. So yeah, something like that. And the audience was kind of very welcome with that change and it helped us to increase the number of participant countries. So we have a lot of participants from Europe, uh, some newcomers from South Africa, China, Kazakhstan. So yeah, it's become more and more international. So, and maybe we are considering um, doing the next conference next year, also in online form. Well, that was kind of it. Thank you very much, Anton. Uh, sorry, I was I, I muted my microphone. Um, thank you. And uh, if there are no comments for you, I will move to the next uh, speaker, who is uh, Bachar El Hassan. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, hello. So I will just uh, tell you a little bit of what is happening uh, with the uh, Lebanon section. In fact, in Lebanon section, we have two problems. The first one that started before coronavirus uh, problem is the unstable. Uh, financial and uh, security uh, uh, situation in Lebanon. Uh, in fact, the revolution October, uh, 2019, and uh, this led to a very uh, severe uh, financial situation. Uh, 
in fact, uh, before the revolution, uh, one dollar was about 1,500 Lebanese lira. Nowadays, it is around 7,000 Lebanese lira. So the Lebanese pound uh, lost about 80% of its value. This was a very big problem for us at the beginning of uh, uh, March for renew renewable of membership. And in fact, uh, it's very complicated, first of all, because uh, now. Of Lebanese lira, so now a day $100 is about uh, the half salary, the salary of one half month for a regular employee. This, uh, I mentioned this problem in my report of uh, March uh, and Varsovia. Uh, for sure, the second problem that we are facing is uh, like all people and all countries, is the lockdown because of coronaviruses and uh, many events were cancelled. But what's good now is that we uh, shifted to online events. And uh, we, uh, last week, the young professional uh, group and uh, student uh, affinity groups uh, organized the Lebanon uh, Student and Young Professional Lebanon Congress in 2020. It was very successful online. It was for three days. And the advantage of online uh, uh, event is that uh, we are uh, we had uh, attendees from several countries. In general, when we made the Lebanon uh, Student and Young Professional Congress, only uh, attendees from Lebanon uh, attend this event. But because it was online, we spread the link to all our. Uh, members and other countries' members, and many uh, members from uh, other countries participated to this event. Uh, the second uh, event that we are now uh, preparing, the IEEE Lebanon Section Student Competition, it was uh, launched last year for the first version, and this year also it will take place, and it will be also a digital uh, version uh, use, uh, using online platforms. Uh, the third also event we are organizing uh, in cooperation with the American University of Beirut is also an online hackathon for Lebanese uh, students and IEEE members. And uh, it will be open also for other countries, so we will share the link with other colleagues in other countries. So, uh, in a brief, this is the situation in Lebanon. But the, uh, what, what we are uh, uh, afraid about is the big problem, financial problem. Uh, also, the other uh, problem that I want to mention is that in Lebanon section, we have uh, an acceptable amount of money in banks. But the problem is that we are not able to access our money, like all people in Lebanon. So this is uh, uh, making us uh, in a very uh, uh, bad financial situation as we are not able to access our money to uh, organize events. That's all for us. Uh, thank you very much, Bashar, for sharing with us uh, this situation. We knew about the problems in Lebanon and uh, we are sorry for that. And we will try to help you as much as possible. I think um, we will have a, a offline discussion between uh, you and uh, Adam and the rest of the OPCOM. Okay. And see okay. how we can help you. Okay. 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 So I'm sorry to hear this, and I know that uh, especially your country has been hit uh, very strongly because of this situation. Thank you very much, Magdalena. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Magdalena, just one, one quick comment. Sorry to interrupt. I see Nadez uh, and Kunisina is, uh, is driving and has her video on. Maybe we should suggest her not to use the video when she's driving. It's not so safe. Yeah. 
That's okay. I am trying to stop now, so I will be stopped in one second. I am already on the parking place. Be safe. Just be safe. That's all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm stopping. So, yeah, I'm just now, uh, just a few seconds about the parking. So, uh, I have to say, I will say shortly that we have all activities uh, online in Latvia. And I would say that uh, the dropout is not so big in that rear section, so we still are active, and especially in uh, in uh, the activities we can provide in the way of um, teleconferences and um, let's say to serving our members in a virtual way. And also PhD school we have had in virtual. Uh, virtual mode these days so but i still have a question because we have not so bad situation according to the pandemic and we are um how to say we are allowed to travel to estonia and Lithuania at least so our neighborhood countries and the region so uh, maybe it would have a decision for the future activities, especially I'm talking about the student activities and the other, um, let's say maybe non regular conferences that to allow to pay the travel costs. Because you know, for us, it is possible to travel, not, not for the long distances, but still, we can travel. Now, there's the, uh, the problem is not that we can not travel or or travel in many countries the traveling inside the country is allowed uh, by the local okay. authorities but the problem is that IEEE uh, for the moment being has banned any trip of IEEE um, members because of IEEE business so uh, this is what we have right now we of course we can ask uh, I triple E about it, and uh, and we will get back to you with this. But I said by some art, I think you should be uh, you should be uh, looking after your safety now, and <laughs> and we are very thankful that you have been willing to stay with us until the end of the meeting. But uh, this is it, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. So we have another speaker, and after that, I have no more speaker in my list. Uh, the person I have uh, as the last speaker is David from South Africa section. David, would you like to go ahead? Yes, uh, thank you very much, um, Chair and colleagues. Just wanted to share some of our experiences in South Africa. Um, so we're just hitting um, our winter season now. And we have a uh, rapidly increasing rate of infections of COVID-19 in South Africa. At the moment, we are getting close to the 100,000 mark. And where I live in the Western Cape, and precisely Cape Town, is the epicenter of the coronavirus, um, is COVID-19 in South Africa. So we are roughly at the point where uh, most of Europe was um, a few, about two months ago. Uh, uh, that's just to put the background into where we are. And as a result, um, the academia and industry is um, heavily affected at the moment. We just got to level three lockdown, which does not allow travel within the country, but within your city uh, with some restrictions. Uh, most of us are still working from home. The strategy that we have put in place as a section is to focus um, that information as a section strategy, um, it wasn't well attended to. And I think the, re the reason was because um, a lot of members uh, nationwide were preoccupied and disturbed by the rapid um, rate of um, increase in infections. So we activated Plan B, which was to be proactive and get in touch with um professionals that could um, do these presentations and webinar and that has been um, successful so i think the first set of webinars will begin at the end of june and july you know at least three a month for the rest of the year so it's active 
than and above that, we've had a few administrative meetings which have gone well. We got two approved proposed um, projects, COVID-19 projects by Antropoly site and HS, HSC. Um, and those projects, um, COVID-19 projects are ongoing and they are in, in line to meet the expected um, outputs um, within time and budget. So, so that is where we are. And um, I think the next half of the year, although our um, peak is estimated for September for the coronavirus COVID-19 um, disease, but nonetheless, we are moving on and we hope to meet our minimum targets at the least and hopefully exceed that. Thank you very much, David. I'm sorry that uh, you are now going um, increasing the people who are sick, but uh, you need to be patient and this pandemic will hopefully uh, go, go out slowly, but we will recover from it. I don't know in which conditions, mainly economic conditions, but uh, it will, we will get there. Well, thank you for that. And I I have three new um, persons in the list uh, for speaking. We have only um, a bit more than 20 minutes left. So I will ask the, the three of you, Samart, Sohaif and John Funso, in this order to um, don't speak too much, although you, if we past the line of the 1 p.m. for me is okay. I don't know about the rest, but for me it's fine. And then we would like to have a wrap up that seeing what how the meeting went, I think is going to be easy because essentially we agree that uh, the proposal we we present to you is is um, okay. And we, we only need to, to wait for your um, applications. So, Samart, you, you are first in the, in the list. I'll be very short, in fact. So, <clears throat> the only thing I was going to say is that Sweden in, in general, we, we are since, if you, if you know the geography of Sweden, we are quite long country. We are not, uh, not very small and centralized country. So, a lot of our members live across the length of the country. So, this problem that we are seeing now with COVID, with people not being able to travel, has been always there in Sweden. Uh, so we have been focusing on uh, online meetings and virtual events almost forever now. Um, and that could be one reason that even now we are able to keep up the momentum. Uh, and if you all would like to join, of course, you're more than welcome to join our uh, events. We are more than happy to you know, open it for everyone in, in the R8 region. Um, and some of the, or more, more or less all the events are done by the chapters. Uh, they're quite uh, healthy, they're quite um, vibrant. So when they do events, they also invite the other Nordic chapters in general. So that that also brings in more people uh, into the meeting. But if you'd like to uh, attend any one of our chapter uh, meetings, technical or seminars, just feel free and I will send an invite to everyone. That's all Magdalena, thank you. Thank you very much, Samart, and thank you very much for offering that possibility. And I think, uh, one opportunity we have here um, is to increase the communication between us, between the sections and between all of us. So uh, it will be, we can try to formalize this somehow, um, but I, I will encourage all of you to communicate with, with each other and try to obtain the maximum advantage of uh, we have in these online meetings that we can all attend, well, provided that we the meeting is not huge or uh, the, the, the fact that we are also entering in that meeting will cause problems in the infrastructure. But I believe that uh, WebEx, for example, is quite, uh, is a very good tool for handling um, a large amount of, of people in the in the meeting like we experienced in March with the region 8 meeting and uh, we have experience also with the uh, meetings for the IEEE board uh, of directors and so on there are many people there at the same time and and we can we can do it so thank you very much Samart for doing this and uh, let's see if we can 
think of a way of uh, spreading the communication between us. So any comment from uh, for Samart? If not, I'll move to the next uh, person, So Sohaib. Right. Um, so, Magdalena, I think because I had some technical, this is Lorna speaking, I had some technical issue and I didn't have the option for raise hand. I asked so hype to, to do it on my behalf. Um, right. So, um, so welcome, Mona. Thank you. Can you hear me? Welcome. Sorry for, uh, I didn't know that. Uh, that was you and not so hype who were willing to speak. So, welcome. And of course, you are, you are welcome to speak. Thank you very much for organizing this uh, meeting today and apologies that I didn't get it on time to react fast. Um, just just a quick report to have to have comments and ideas from yourself and other section chairs uh, as well as a quick question on one of the comments made. Um, we currently run uh, new events as usual and the only events that we had to cancel postpone was milestone events. Um, uh, we also have one-to-one uh, -one meetings with chapter chairs. Uh, we currently have uh, uh, had over nearly 20 meetings uh, to discuss how health check for our activities and also to see whether chapters can potentially uh, contribute to the COVID-19 situation on technical level. Uh, for instance, the uh, uh, if it's um, communication society with privacy of the tracing apps or um, if if the technology doesn't really relate if they can help with the membership development especially with the student chapter uh, setup as an investment currently so using the merit of not using our budget for traveling we actually subsidize student branches uh, student chapters related to each society so we are exploring different ways and we will have a, a meeting end of July with all the chapter chairs at the chapter chair forum to see how the section can react to this situation and if there is any similar activities or thoughts that you uh, or other section chairs in Region 8 can uh, help us with, that would be great input for us to discuss it and raise it in our uh, section. Um, the second point, um, which is a question actually with regard to comment made, um, the events that we run, I think uh, we can also again use the merit of not traveling and we have a visa free attendance and all those overheads that we usually have, although we miss the um, luxury of having face to face interaction. We support the idea that you raise to open up our events for other region eight meetings. Um, if you can have that central point for the website, we can share our events and website directly so uh, other region eight section members can also join. The only uh, um, point that came to me is the license, uh, the, the limit of the participants of the license. I don't know how many is in WebEx, but the Zoom account we have, we have upgraded it to have multiple hosts for convenience, but we can only host 100 people. And last meeting that I was chairing with the speaker on COVID-19, we had nearly 80 people joining. So within UK and Ireland, it was a very short notice as well. Um, so maybe to, to also, I know that Adam is looking at these um, platform, online platform, maybe if we are thinking of investing and sharing the events would be at the right time to see if we can subsidize to increase uh, the attendees or if each section that are already having Zoom accounts can chip in and have it upgraded, just different ways how it can centrally be coordinated by Region 8 so we can share the uh, the content and the events that are already happening in UK with other sections and our section members can also join other sections activities um, as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mona, for, for this suggestion. I, I have used um, Zoom um, during this month and I know it's much more limited than WebEx. So I, I know that there are people that prefer it. I don't know exactly uh, why I personally prefer WebEx and uh, the number of people through WebEx is higher than through, through Zoom. But we are, this, that's my personal opinions. But as uh, 
Region 8, I think we are open uh, to explore all the possibilities. And uh, it's not a problem of, uh, of money. Uh, at this point, it will be a decision that we will need to take if it is more convenient. Um, so we will do it. And thank you anyway for opening, um, like other section chairs did, opening your, your activities to everybody who uh, would like to, to attend them. And as I said before, um, the only problem I see on that is the limitation of uh, of the platform that uh, a particular section is using. And this is what I mentioned that maybe uh, it's it's not possible because there is a limit in the people at the attending that particular meeting. But uh, we will explore what other possibilities are there, and we will go back to to the sections. So thank you for being here and thank you for for this comment. Can I add a little bit on the WebEx Zoom? I think I have a bit of information that I, that I can share with the team. If that's okay. Yes, it is okay. But we only have ten minutes, and we still have one speaker, and we would like to wrap up. But anyway, David, go ahead. So um, I've done some investigation on this in brief. Um, WebEx IEEE members can host meetings for up to 100 participants um, without prior reservation. If you anticipate more than 100 participants, up to 300, you'd have to go through the reservation um, email address. They commit to three to five working days to give you feedback, and they will set up a WebEx meeting for an anticipated over 100 um, participants. Um, for Zoom, it is possible to have up to a thousand participants. Um, I've been involved in a couple of other larger meetings and it costs a little bit more. So both platforms can handle um, more than 100 participants. Um, personally, Zoom has been very fluid and easy to work with, but WebEx has advantages through the IEEE, you can host over 100 participants without paying for it. Thank you, David, for that. And um, I don't know if John Funso would like to uh, speak again. Yes, Prof, I would like to speak again. Um, I thank you for the opportunity. I, basically, um, the suggestions. Had John, your voice is breaking. I only understood Antonio. Okay, maybe I'll just type. I will type it and submit. No, your voice is breaking, John. Okay, don't forget uh, that all of you, you are most welcome to uh, communicate with us at any time. So uh, if uh, I'm saying this to you, John, but also to everybody, uh, the fact that now we may have uh, problems in hearing you, that doesn't mean that we are not here for you. So please uh, just uh, contact us and we will try to, to answer in a as quick as possible. So if, um, if there is nobody else who want to speak at this point. Can I just... Uh, I have just Allah, Allah Kali, Kali Def, uh, you want to speak? Yes, just Allah. very quickly, um, since uh, we, we should use WebEx, and uh, my colleague Mohammed mentioned that it's, uh, it takes time to set up WebEx through IEEE. Is there a way that uh, you expedite this process? Maybe till I to be to um, find a way to let us set up a Webex meeting quickly, so it will not be a burden for us to use Webex through I to Thank you. Yeah, 
uh, Ala, as, as far as I know, uh, it takes just one day. Uh, so I may be wrong, but um, our experience is that the staff is reacts very quickly and uh, you can have your meeting organized in one day. You cannot do it uh, in real time, of course, uh, but if you uh, just uh, ask for the WebEx service uh, ahead of time, uh, not to not too many hours before, but a day or better if it is two days, uh, you will have no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think I should close at this point um, this part of the meeting. So the only thing that is left is to wrap up the what we have said uh, during the meeting, the main ideas and uh, your particular uh, questions or concern, if it has not been answered during during this meeting, please uh, contact us and send us an email and we will try to answer. But I think we took care of most of, of your questions and concern, or we tried to at least. Uh, so I will ask Antonio now if uh, if he doesn't mind to do the small wrap up of the <coughs> sorry of the conclusions of this meeting, Antonio. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, I was trying to update the slides, so I'm really happy that uh, people like the idea of uh, having this support from the region to start uh, reviewing our hybrid or slightly face-to-face -face events, uh, little by little. Um, so after all what uh, was said, I was trying to compile this uh, uh, this last slide and I will send them all to everyone when they are definitive in maybe tomorrow. Uh, so uh, regarding sec region support, right, the, uh, the idea does, is that you can apply by email. Uh, we agree that you will send to me and then I will distribute to the rest of this uh, a small committee, treasurer and vice chairs. Uh, uh, to uh, to uh, evaluate them, right? And we will need very little information, just the event content, what you plan to do, date and time and location, where, uh, when and where, and then the number of people that you uh, will invite or uh, the, 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 the type of people, like you will invite students in this student branch or members of this chapter or whatever, and the number of people that are allowed by the local regulation, what are the limits, the limits that you have uh, um, then. Uh, the, the support that you need from the, from the region, like you will need uh, us to find a speaker, you will need a, a certain amount of money or whatever, right? Uh, any other information that you uh, uh, find useful, like if you have like any specific uh, safety measures or you are connecting uh, live to whatever, you know, anything else. Uh, this will be an open call, so we have no deadlines. Uh, uh, Whenever you, you think that you could organize something, uh, let us know. But I suggest, and this is something that maybe we can we can change a little bit, I suggest to allow at least two weeks uh, bef uh, between the, the application and the event, and no more than six, right? I just wrote these two numbers more or less randomly, but I think they are reasonable. Uh, we need some time to, to, to evaluate. And uh, it doesn't make much sense, in my opinion, to organize things uh, uh, very much in the future, right? Because we don't know what will happen in three months. So organizing something now in September, uh, we don't know what will be the situation, whether it makes sense to have something there or not. So I, I put this two week, two or six weeks, like a rough uh, guideline. Uh, of course, some, some variation of that uh, is okay, right? I don't know if you agree with this two to six. We can we can comment or you can send email to uh, to us if you wish. And last one uh, next to last thing is please distribute also this information to chapter student branches and affinity groups. It will be very difficult to convey a meeting uh, with all the student branches in the region or all the chapters in the region or affinity groups. That's very hard to do, right? So that's why we rely on you to uh, transmit this information about this uh, support. To all of the units in general. So moving to the last thing that I want to comment. Uh, any, uh, uh, any question or uh, comment on this? The, the only comment I have uh, is that 
as I said before, um, in reply to one of the comments, next weekend we are having a meeting with the subcommittee chairs. Uh, that include the chapter coordination, of course, the the, the affinity groups, uh, subcommittees. So we will rely to them this information. But is it is helpful? I mean, I think the first people who should contact them are the section chairs. So we will uh, we will take care of this uh, next weekend. We we'll also have this the student activities uh, subcommittee there. So we will rely all this information to them, and hopefully they will make use of this proposal. But we will tell them to. Uh, to go it through the section, not directly. I think it's better if they go through the section that uh, doing directly uh, to us. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. And so, the last thing, uh, I had a, a thing, wonderful suggestion uh, from Maya. She's suggesting that maybe we can switch on all of our, uh, our cameras at the same time and trying to take picture of all the people attending the meeting, just like we will do uh, on a real meeting. I don't know if that's possible or not, but uh, I think it's worth trying. So if, if, if Magdalena, if you agree, we can do that uh, yes. a little bit later. Yes, I will be more than happy to do that. So that, yeah, I was going to say the first thing you need to do is to take a uh, uh, switch off your slides, which you did already. And I don't know how you get the picture of all of everybody in the screen, I guess. This is something that uh, Adil knew because it was uh, his screen that we were sharing. So Adil, take care of that. Switch to uh, the view. It's on the top right. To do that capture of of all of us. And uh, I already taken a picture earlier in the meeting. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Adil. So thank you everybody for being here. I think I'm very happy with this meeting. I don't know what's your feeling. Uh, we. We hope that you you will send us your your feedback. Uh, I think uh, it's good that we uh, talk to each other, that we see each other at least in this limited way. But uh, is this is the best thing after a face to face meeting? And uh, I really enjoy all your suggestion, and we we'll really look forward to help uh, all of you in the next months so that uh, we will, as uh, it was said by So thank you. And I think this is time to adjourn the meeting after, uh, if, we can, if we want to try once more, Adil, uh, photograph of all of us, all, all, we lost some people in the way, some people left time. And uh, because they weren't unable to stay for longer uh, time, but otherwise, can close the meeting here. Thank you, and bye bye. Thank you, Prof. Bye bye. Thank you, bye. 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 Bye bye. Thank you, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Um, Antonio, Anna. thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye. Ms. Dedina, Antonio, bye. All. Okay. Bye bye then.